Hello friends and welcome to another review of a vintage beauty. This time I have for you this beautiful, beautiful celluloid fountain pen from the late 1940s made in Italy. And we are talking about a brand that is known by Estens or Marca Estens as it is present on all the vintage original boxes. This pen was uh, sold by a company based in Modena, Italy between uh, the late 1930s and uh, the 1950s. As you can see, uh, these were medium quality fountain pens made uh, in this uh, beautiful celluloid material and they were manufactured by uh, various companies located in Settino Torinese area. If you watch my channel, I have prepared for you other free fountain pens that were made in the Settino Torinese area. Two of them branded Maryland and one of them uh, without uh, a name, but beautiful, beautiful celluloids. And we will talk about them in a few moments. But returning to our fountain pen, I must tell you that uh, the modern, uh, the, uh, the Estance pens from the 30s and early 40s were bottom fillers. They had this blind cap and you can see the uh, button. Uh, filler. Uh, what uh, it means, it means it has a, a lever inside and a second when you push uh, this button, the lever pushes on the sack and it, it creates pressure and it draws the ink. You can see the beautiful celluloid of uh, this fountain pen and the nice, nice gold trims. And I particularly love uh, this uh, special clip, it is a very springy clip, you can uh, push it here and uh, it's very, very flexible, you can see. It has a special system here that it allows it to be uh, quite, quite maneuverable. You can see the classic torpedo shape of the late 40s and the beginning of the 1950s and also at the end of the 1950s, of the 1940s and beginning of the 1950s, they uh, switched the material from celluloid to uh, thermoplastic resin and the filling mechanism from a button filler to a piston filler. Specific also to the Maryland fountain pens made in the Satino Torinese area, they were also variants of ivory colored models that were particularly common and marketed as communion gifts. You know that Italy is a Catholic country and it was a nice uh, gift for young teenagers after uh, the communion ceremony. It's interesting, as you can see here, we have a stance and if you notice, it is slightly faded, but we have two eagles in a circle in the front and in the back. The, the barrels are engraved with the crest of the Dukedom of Este. It is an eagle within a crown of laurel. And of course, the same logo we you will see on the original original boxes so uh, this is um, our fountain pen and um, it has in common lots of things with uh, the other fountain pens made in the Settino Torinese area and I have prepared for you these three celluloid beauties and I will leave them aside. Well, even the stands in the 1950s, they adopted this um, 
integrated piston filler and I want to show it to you. So it's like this. It's like a syringe, but it's um, almost like a piston. You don't um, unscrew, but you simply push this uh, rod. Those are the fountain pens made in the Settino Torinese area. Let's uh, put them side by side because I have prepared for you another Italian fountain pen. I believe it's also from the 1940s to show you a little bit of difference between the quality of different manufacturers. And this is a beautiful, beautiful Omas Extra fountain pen. And I presume that it's from the early 1940s and the beginning of the 1950s, also like our fountain pen. But look at this beautiful, beautiful material, this beautiful, beautiful celluloid. This is the difference between a luxury fountain pen and a medium fountain pen. Of course, uh, the extra is a piston filler and this is a button filler. And why not? Let's show you also the nibs of uh, them. Uh, you can see also that the OMAS model has an ink window specific to the piston fillers. This being a button filler doesn't require a ink window. Let us see them. Of course, a slightly bigger nib on the OMAS Extra. And let me show you a different breathing hole. As you can see, we have a heart shape breathing hole on the omas and almost like an eagle or a strange shape of the breathing hole of the stance. You can see a stance, you can see 14 carat and let's look at the ebonite feeds. They are quite similar of course with more details on the omas model. I will leave the OMAS model on the table because um, I want to show you the inner mechanism of this uh, fountain pen. When it was delivered to me, the seller told me it needs a new sack. And usually this part is quite difficult to open. It is uh, enforced with slack. Let's put the nib here. And I want to show you the system. You can see this rod. And let me see if I can demonstrate to you. I will open also the blind cap. So, imagine that uh, inside this, you can see that uh, lever here. Imagine that uh, we have a sack. So when we push this button at the end, it... Um, It gives uh, this push to this uh, lever and the lever pushes on the sack and it creates a pressure and the pen, it, uh, it's, um, it creates a pre pressure and the sack draws the ink from the ink bottle. Unfortunately, I don't have a replacement sack. So for the writing sample, I will simply dip the nib um, I will simply dip the nib in um, I'm sorry I think that um, maybe I've done a mistake with the rod so I will uh, I will close it for the moment and um, I will put it right here. Of course, I want to, to I want to show you the dimensions of the fountain pens. You can see that they are both they are very similar in shape and form and in length they are medium fountain pens. So the most expensive is the Omas which was made by the OMAS Fountain Pen Company. 
and others are medium quality fountain pens made in the Settino Tolinese area. I will also leave the dimensions of uh, our fountain pen on the screen and um, we will be ready for the writing sample. And uh, for the writing sample, we will use this interesting, interesting turquoise Faber Castle ink. Okay. So remember, I told you we don't have the ink sack, so I will simply dip the feed, the ebonite feed and the gold nib in the ink and then we will see if it holds enough ink for a writing sample. Okay. Remember to close the cap. Okay. And now let's uh, see how it uh, writes. So for uh, this writing sample, I will uh, change a bit the angle of um, the film. So bear with me. Okay. So let's bring the, okay. And now I will be ready for the writing sample. So we have here um, a stance fountain pen or uh, marca. Marca is stance. This is a fountain pen made in Italy. Made in Italy. And um, it was made in the late 1940s in the Settino Torinese area. Settino Torinese area near Turin in Italy. And I believe it was made in the late 1940s because of the bottom filler mechanism. Okay, it has a gorgeous 14 karat gold nib. And as you can see, it has a little bit of flex. So it is a semi, semi flexible nib, a quite interesting nib. Let us test how uh, juicy it is. So you can see it's quite a juicy nib. A beautiful, beautiful nib. Uh, let's um, even write uh, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog um, the ink um, is nearly depleted because I've just dipped it uh, with uh, this section of the nib and with the ebonite feed in uh, the ink and um, I must tell you that I'm quite pleased with the performance of this nib. It's quite an interesting nib. Let us check uh, again to see how flexible it is. So this is no pressure and simply add more pressure and you can see the difference. Of course, <laughs> uh, not uh, more, uh, not so, so more ink. So another beautiful fountain pen. I don't collect Italian fountain pens, but they simply, um, they um, reach my way. And um, I'm quite blessed with some uh, rare fountain uh, brands, uh, if you go, um, some small brands in Italy, 
but uh, quite quite nice brands especially the ones from the 1930s the 1940s and the 1950s of course it is a shame but because with the invention of the ballpoint pen uh, they all uh, lost uh, their businesses in the 1950s it's a shame that we don't see those producers still active on the market but um, it is a good thing because for a vintage pen collector you can buy them quite quite cheap as and as you know i paid for this only 40 euros including the shipment so um, it, it is a great great day when you can see this sem semi flexible nib on um, a beautiful beautiful vintage of course the only downside is uh, you have to replace the inner sack once in a 10 years but uh, it isn't quite um, a big investment i believe that with uh, approximately 20 euros you can pay a professional to labor and to replace uh, uh, the old sack with a new sack so not quite quite uh, uh, high cost once uh, in a 10 years period so thank you guys for watching this review thank you for your time i hope you've um, learned uh, new interesting information about this italian uh, vintage fountain pen manufacturer or uh, I'm not calling it a manufacturer because it was manufactured by different uh, uh, firms in the Cetino Dorinese area. But uh, it, it is certainly a brand in the Italian um, history of fountain pens. And I think um, it is quite romantic with that logo of the eagle, of the dukedom of... Um, of the dukedom of um, Aston. So again, thank you for your time. As always, I wish you to have a nice day. See you again at the next episode. And bye-bye.